Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. That's our 2013 Chevrolet. It's a Silverado. It's got the big 5.3 and the driver's side window switch works fine for all of the windows except for the passenger side window. That one doesn't go up or down unless you go to the passenger side and then it works over there. But everything else works good so let's have a look. Yes, yeah, so we're all on the same page here. We'll kick the key on and you can see the driver's window functions. Left rear functions, right rear functions, they all go up and down. Everything works from the master switch, except this little guy, the passenger one, nothing happens. But if we go over there, it works just fine. So typically, I would just grab a little wiring diagram here. But I see there's a couple different ones. It says power window circuit with bucket seats and power mirrors. And then it shows, you know, the switch over here, and it shows, which I was surprised. I was like, I can't believe this doesn't work on a low speed data network. This is old style, like, you know mechanical switches and then I scroll down keep scrolling and then we get to the diagram power window circuit without bucket seats and power mirrors in this one you can see there's no wires on the switch we've got a power a ground and low speed serial data which I would expect this to work on so long story short fast way to find out is just pull that switch out and see how many wires we have going to it and that's going to determine how we're going to test it I think this grab handle here has to come off if I remember correctly. You don't tear many of these Chevy doors apart as you do like the old ones where you're always doing window regulators. But I'm pretty certain that this thing comes off. Yep, it does. So a couple of little retainers, one there, 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 and there. And then we need the classic 10 mil, and then I think this, yeah, I think this just pops out once you get the pull handle off. I just can't imagine this having like old school mechanical switches. It, it may be. I guess you know the other thing that would be faster is just to plug a scan tool into it to see to see what we see. I don't know where if it's just a uh, a LIN data bus where it just talks to itself. But this really didn't take that long. I don't think to get into this. I could be wrong here though. Pretty sure these little guys just pop up. Yes sir. Look at that. Okay, let's see how many wires we have on the switch. Oh, who does what here? That's the lock and that's the unlocker thing. Let's get this. I'm gonna unplug the unlocker and the mirrors just to keep the wires out of our way. And then we'll do whatever kind of testing we gotta do to determine what's wrong. There's that one. And I'll move you guys to a better spot to see. Come on, baby. There we go, okay. Now, we can see how many wires we have. We got quite a few. Looks like we got four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Let's go see. Here's what the back of our switch looks like. So an eight pin there, and then a couple up on top. So we got two eight pin connectors minus two wires. So 14 wires. Mrs. O just said dinner is ready, or lunch is ready rather. So it is this diagram here, the one with uh, bucket seats, because that's what this truck has. So it is correct. So after I eat lunch, we will come up with a plan of attack. See what we need and what we don't need and who works and what doesn't and um, see how these signals work. And uh, we'll take it from there, folks. And stuff. All right, so lunch is over. Uh, let's see here. I grabbed this a uh, little Tesla. I think we're going to need it. We could probably look up the theory and operation how this works. I don't know because it just says like the outputs uh, past your up signal, past your down signal, right rear up, right rear down, left rear up, left rear down. All these, they just call them signals. I don't know if these have logic in them. I don't. I don't think they probably do or if they do to a certain degree. But anyhow, let's just go through and see what we see so we have a power and a ground which we you know know is good because every, everything on everything works up one side so that's really all we're concerned with is just 
the one side, but just to show you. Uh, so we do have power and ground, and then this brown and blue, this should be the output to the driver's side motor, which this should light up a test light in both directions. Because it's just going to reverse the polarity on it to make it go up and down. Okay, so let's see, let's check it on a known good one. Like let's, uh, for example, let's do the right rear window, right rear output. Uh, let's see, so right rear up signal is light green. Let's see. Let me go grab that. Ah, suspected spam, it says I can see it from here. Let's see, so we're not worried about that. Light green, so here's a light green wire. Sorry about the cell phone, folks. I just want to try to back probe beside that, and then we're going to go to ground. It's 250 milliamp light here, right rear. Okay, so it does put out enough current to light a test light. So that's, which way am I going here? So that's up, and then that's down. So, okay, so we do know, I guess we can find the down circuit for that one, and it should do the same thing. Uh, right rear down, it's purple. So we should be able to go to the purple wire and that should light up when we go down with that window. And it does, so that's down, green wire, up. So that's what we expect to see for the passenger side. So let's see if we're receiving a signal here. So passenger up is light blue, passenger down is tan. So must be these wires right here. So there's light blue passenger side. Oops, bumped into you there. So that is passenger. Yeah, no signal out of that one. Let's go to down. No signal out of that one. So that's easy. <laughs> the switch is bad. Which I suspected this when the guy called because I thought it worked on a LIN bus. And I figured, well, if everything else works, it's got to be a bad switch. So I ordered one from Chevy. It should be out there on our shelf. So let's go, let's go get that. There it is, folks. Genuine Chevrolet. I suppose we could have just got it out and plugged it in, but then what do we know? It's a good guess on our part anyways, right? Plug it in. Hey, look, that one works now. This one works, so you guys are wobbling all over the place. Yes, sir. So they all work, so that's that. <laughs> oh, what a stupid video. Anyhow. At least we all know now. Uh, I'm, I'm a little surprised, I'll be honest with you, that they don't run this off a some sort of network. I mean, it's, I would think it'd be a whole lot easier to run one wire to each window switch as opposed to, you know, multiple wires, but I guess it's not a whole lot of extra. I don't know. What do I know? So now we just have to very carefully get this thing out without breaking any of these stinking tabs. Amazing how much of a car you can take apart with a pry driver. So there's that. You could probably pop this apart and do a full Russian, no parts required fix. But I think it was pretty cheap. And we go like this. I don't have to worry about it coming back to haunt me. At least for something I did. So there's that. We'll plug his mirrors back in. Plug in the lockout switch. Oh, I had a good one in today earlier too. I probably should have shared with you guys, but I didn't. There was a fatal error in service data. I always tell you guys never to trust service data. If, you, if you're in service data and something looks abnormal, it probably is. So I was working on this Subaru in 05, Outback, rear windshield wiper. I just wanted to get the diagram so I could see if I had a bad motor or what the deal was. But uh, if you followed the flow chart in service data, yeah, I caught the little guy on fire. It was fantastic. I should I should just do a separate video on that. Just showing, like, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but they gave a pin out 
of which motor to or which connector to jump power and ground to. And uh, I was looking at a diagram while I was also looking at pin out. I'm like, man, if you do this, this is gonna go up in smoke. And then so I looked up on OEM service data, and sure as heck, they had their diagram flip flop. So, anyways, short story, kind of nonsense. Yay, everything works. All right, let's quit flicking buttons because pretty soon we'll be putting regulators in it. And that's that, folks. And one thing I'm not going to regulate is how much time you spend in that comment section. Leave in your questions, your comments, your concerns. Find us on the Insta, the Facebook. You know what to do. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching. Bonus footage time, folks. I, I know somebody's going to ask, tell me about the Subaru. I, I, this kind of stuff is kind of boring, so it's hard to make a video on. Anyhow, uh, you can see 05 Outback I was working on. The rear uh, wiper motor wasn't functioning, and I wanted to go see you know who's supposed to have power, who's supposed to have ground. And then a quick bypass test. Does the motor work, or is it you know wire issue? So... Here it is, pretty simple circuit. We have power here, we have ground here, and then we have our, our park um, position signal getting sent back to the, I think it's the intermittent wiper module or whatever. Um, but it's clear to make this motor run, we supply, you know, we can supply power to pin two and a ground to pin three, okay? However, when you look on Mitchell on Demand, it tells you, connect the battery to the wiper connector and confirm that the wiper motor operates. Now, this is for a 05. They want you to connect the battery positive to pin four and then negative to pin three, of course, you know, no fuse. <laughs> Which, you know, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. But uh, if we connect battery power to number four and the ground to number three and the park switch is closed, what do you guys think is gonna happen? Poof! <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> Your little jumper wire goes up in smoke. However, when we look at another source of service data, we connect power to or ground to pin number three and power to pin number two. So let's see if we hook it to number three, ground, and power to number two, what's going to happen? Well, the wiper motor is going to run. <laughs> so, and then as you scroll down through the rest of their um, service data where you check the operation of the um, park switch, uh, which they have you doing here uh, they have it all pretty close like this this diagram is correct um, and this diagram is incorrect this should also be pin three and two so like i say if something doesn't look right like i say the only one they had correct was was this one as far as checking um the intermittent position or the or the park switch rather but if something isn't right it probably isn't. If it doesn't jive with your wire diagram, get a factory diagram. If it still doesn't jive, don't do not do something that looks stupid. And if you do, make sure you record it. So that's it, folks. Never trust service data, ever. <laughs> Sometimes you can, but it's not always right. Just because it comes from the manufacturer doesn't mean it's correct. I think anytime that there's human involvement and stuff, writing manuals or anything like that, then there's bound to be errors. And a simple discrepancy in where to, you know, test a certain pin or where to, you know, apply power, or don't apply power can make a big difference as to whether or not your jumper wires go up in smoke or your new component that you're testing or something. So compare sources. That's why I absolutely hate flow charts because flow charts will often tell you probe pin, you know, pin number two, and then put your ground here, and then it tells you what the value is. But if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know, you know, what's pin number four, why am I probing it? You got to ask yourself those questions like, why does it want me to probe this? And why is this the value that it expects to see? And that's why as you progress or, um, you know, become a better mechanic, you'll, you'll start to just, you know, throw flow charts in the garbage. You'll be able to pull out a diagram, look at it and say, okay, well, let's see what makes sense. You know, pin 21 should have power. This one should have this, this one should have that. Make the notes on your wiring diagram. You know what to test, you know what pins they are, and you know what value to expect. So you can go right there and make the tests that you need. Um, I think Scanner Danner preaches on that, or at least he used to. Uh, you know, he hates flowcharts too. And then you just look at it. But sometimes there is valuable information in flowcharts. That's why we still look at them as mechanics. We'll go in, we'll look, because sometimes they'll have values hidden within the text to tell you, you know, this, you know, thermistor should be 
you know, whatever, you know, uh, it'll give you a voltage range or a, uh, a resistance range on certain items. So uh, sometimes that's helpful and that's hidden within the flowchart. But anyhow, long story short, just don't trust anyone is the moral of this story. Trust no one.